Hello, I'm Nick, and this is La Mulana. Give me one second, because this opened on the wrong screen. There we go. Okay, so La Mulana is probably my favorite indie game ever created. It is a Metroidvania puzzle platformer misery simulator. This is a, this is a cruel and just unusual game. And we're going to jump right into it. What we're going to be doing is a 100% playthrough, which requires doing a bunch of very specific things. But first, we're going to come in here and talk to Elder Zelpud. Now, this is a really bad thing to watch for your first playthrough, because we basically need to speedrun the game in order to get, well, all the things we're going to be going for. So you can see on the left, there's a bunch of stuff. These are all of the requirements you need to meet in order to get all of the characters to appear in the end credits. And really the gist of it is we need to 100% the game in under 10 hours. That requirement isn't actually that bad if you know what you're doing. Uh, it usually takes me around like 6-ish hours to do this. If you don't know what you're doing, it's a bit of a problem. So to begin with, I'm just going to run around and collect a bunch of money because we need to buy some stuff. I always forget which one of these stores it's in. Nope, nope, that's not it. Mayhaps, over here. Okay, so the first thing we want to buy is just one of those. It's also been a while since I've played this, so hopefully I don't fuck up too bad. Uh, anyway, we want to get the hand scanner. And equip the hand scanner. Oh yeah, it has been a while since I've played this, good lord. I'm not really going to be explaining things terribly much. We talk to a skeleton and get a map. Um, there are clues for all of these puzzles all over the place. I absolutely love the way this game works. Basically, you have to do really, really obscure things that are hinted at by clues all over the game. This one's pretty easy. The things I bought earlier are weights. Uh, you can place them on the daises, I believe is how it's pronounced. Like the one you just saw over there. And we're going to be doing that a lot. We're going to be using probably hundreds of weights over the course of this game. But first, we need to jump over this guy and smack a wall a couple times. Because, obviously, get Death Village. Now, the reason we need to talk to Elder Zelpud is because if you don't, you actually can't enter the ruins, which we're about to do. Also, obviously, we need to talk to him for, like, a lot of things later on, but we need to talk to him specifically at the beginning of the game for that. Also, there's a shortcut right there that we're going to use exactly once, but that one time it's worth doing, so, yeah. Now, you'll notice that I didn't buy Glyph Reader, or whatever the hell it's called in this version of the game. Which means we can't read anything yet. We are currently illiterate until we buy software that reads for us. We need to purchase our subscription to, uh... Audible. Anyway, I just stepped on a pressure plate there to get what the fuck am I doing. Excuse me. <laughs> I am going entirely the wrong way. And it opened this chest which had a sacred orb. The sacred orbs increase your health. Or increase your max health, specifically. Now, this is the Gate of Guidance that we're in right now. This area is... Guidance, basically. It's the tutorial for what the ruins are like and the kind of puzzles you're going to be expected to solve, whatnot, and etc. Now, right over there is a Grail tablet, but we can't read, so it is currently useless to us. These enemies are really annoying. They like to jump around a lot and just generally not cooperate. Uh, we're also going to be breaking every single pot. The way this game works is the first time you break open certain pots, they're guaranteed to contain certain items. And right now what we really, really need is money. Now, you'll notice there's a big eyeball at the top of the screen. That is the Eye of Divine Retribution. If we... Well, whenever you see a screen that has one of those on it, you need to be careful because if you run around smacking everything like an idiot, you're going to get hit by lightning. 
So if I were to smack that big, weirdly shaped thing in the middle of the screen, I would get zapped, and it deals percentage-based damage. And I forget how much it is, I want to say it's like 25% of your health that you just lose. Also, these spikes are fake. And the gist of that is to try to prevent you from, like, brute-forcing the solutions to certain puzzles. We can equip those now, although we're probably not going to use them. At least not for the time being. So, in terms of specifically what we need to do, as you can see, we need to unlock fairies, which is required to beat the game. We need to touch every fairy point, we need to find all the hidden coin chests, uh, we need to unlock every fairy lock, collect every item, collect every map, I like the fishy item, as I call it. Basically, we need to buy an item from Gionin, I believe is his name, other than Rose and Camellia. We need to find every piece of software, defeat every guardian on hard mode, which I'll talk about in a little bit. Also, we're getting the map here. Very easy, just place a weight on the dice. You're good. Do I want to go this way? Sure. Actually, no. I'll, I'll come back for this. But yeah, uh, we need to get every email, which requires doing a lot of really weird, specific things that I'll talk about later. As they come up. Also, bats are your worst nemesis in this game. Mainly because this game has, like, Castlevania physics, and if you get hit by anything, you go flying backwards, and you will fall, and it will suck. Anyway, we need to find all the hidden developer areas, which again, we'll talk about that later when it actually happens. We need to collect every sacred orb, collect some specific pieces of software, which is covered by having all the software. Complete Hell Temple, which is a nightmare, as you can imagine. I don't know why I just fought that guy that way, I really didn't need to. Killing both of these red skeletons is going to cause a block to fall over here. Also, I actually just realized, what the hell am I doing? Sorry. Uh, I was so busy, like, looking at the thing on the right side that I didn't realize that I forgot to grab this chest. Okay. There we go. I hate my life. Okay, never mind. Anyway, I mentioned the hidden coin chests. The first one of them is right over here. Ah! This one's really annoying to get. Also, don't whip the big block in the middle of that room or else you get zapped. There we go. Okay. And there we go. Coins. Coins are nice. We like coins. We will be needing, again, like thousands of coins over the course of this. So anyway, as I was saying... Killing those two red skeletons causes this block at the top to drop. And we need it to solve the puzzle of this room. So I mentioned hard mode, and that we need to beat the game on hard mode. Hard mode in this game is kind of weird. You activate it in-game by doing a certain thing. Specifically, there's a tablet that when you read it, it says, Don't read this! And if you read it again, it says, Hey, I warned you, buddy! And it activates hard mode. So we get to choose when hard mode starts, so basically what I'm going to be doing is trying to do absolutely everything you can possibly do in the game before defeating any of the Guardians, and that will just make completing hard mode a little less painless, or a little more painless, rather. Anyway, we solve this little block puzzle, and that causes that thing to open, which leads to the room that the boss of this area is in. Also we can walk through that wall. The ruins of this game exist in kind of like a non-Euclidean space of sorts. Things wrap back on themselves in a way that is weird um, and explainable, but I'm not going to explain it right now because it's not actually relevant until much, 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 much later in the game. Anyway, by coming over here and pushing that block, we opened the chest that you can see in the top right, which I'm now going to jump to and hopefully not get hit by anything. And hey, yeah, that worked. Holy Grail. 
Also, I forgot to mention that pushing this block in over here caused this platform that's going up and down in here to start moving. Also, much earlier uh, when I was talking about solving puzzles and whatnot, I picked up the shell horn, and the shell horn is what actually activates that like Legend of Zelda style sound effect that lets us know when we've solved puzzles. Um, speaking of puzzles, here's another puzzle. This is the first of the puzzles that I swear were designed specifically to just screw with people who played the original game, because in the original game these tablets were different, and you also had to break them in a different order. So, we need to break them in the order of Rain, Wind, Fire, Blood, and Fire. Like that. And doing that causes a dais to appear, or, or sorry, rather, it causes the ladder to come down over here so that we can use a weight on the dais. Uh, and doing that activated something in another room, which I will show you in a second. I honestly have no idea if this is going to be uh, interesting to anybody, but I love this game and kind of wanted to show my strategy for getting through this 100%, getting all the characters. It's commonly called Ace for all characters ending, and it's really fucking hard, but extremely satisfying. Anyway, so placing the dais, or placing a weight on the dais over there causes this dais to appear here, which causes this to come down, which will let us... I'm just gonna wait for this guy to blow up. Get this chest down here. Which is gonna contain the first Ankh Jewel. So, the main goal of the game, for most of it, is going to just be defeating all eight guardians. And the way you defeat each of the guardians is there are eight areas, and in each of the areas there is an Ankh and an Ankh Jewel, and you need to place the Ankh Jewel on the Ankh after revealing the Ankh. So there's the Ankh Jewel, we still need to find the Ankh. Now I'm going to use the Holy Grail, which allows you to teleport, obviously. And I'm going to buy some more stuff. Do I need anything in here? No, I don't. Okay. I know I don't need any... Th or actually, yeah, I can buy this now, I guess. Right? How much is it? Uh... No, I won't buy it yet. I can buy it later. We definitely want to buy Glyph Reader and some more weights. Like, just a lot of weights. Because I don't want to have to worry about it again. Now, I mentioned that we are going to use the shortcut over here once and exactly once ever, and it is now. Because after this, we're going to get the Grail Point in here, which is going to allow us to teleport to the Gate of Guidance whenever we want. And, yeah, so we're, we're never ever going to want to walk back in here ever again. I should also mention that the music in this game is fucking bopping. There are some hardcore bobs. Oh, helps if you equip the software. Whoops. There we go. So yeah, so it's not enough to just, like, see the tablet visually. <laughs> you need to be able to understand it for it to count. But okay, so did all that. I forgot to do something. Whoops. I'm glad I realized it now before I wasted a bunch of time. Um, oh wait, actually, it's over here. In terms of doing more coin chests, there's a dais I forgot to put a weight on over here. Oh yeah, I'll also point out the checklist program I have on the right side of the screen. This is a thing I coded myself because I love this game way too much, like probably an unhealthy amount. And spent, like, god just a really long time, like probably a good like 30 to 40 hours coding that goddamn thing. Okay, so I needed to open those chests first, otherwise I was, yeah, gonna get over to where those coin chests are and not be able to open any of them. Uh, something you'll notice is that tablets have kind of like a faint red outline. That lets you know if you've read the tablet before or not, and specifically that you've read it and understood it. 
you'll notice the red outline will go away and they'll become a little, like, paler once you've read them. Which is a nice little feature. Of course, it doesn't matter if you read a tablet and don't get what it means and disregard it and then have to come back, like, a hundred hours later. Uh, which happens. My first playthrough of this game probably took, like, 40 hours, if I had to guess. It was long, and I didn't even 100% it. In fact, I missed a lot of stuff, because a lot of stuff in the game is permanently missable. Placing the weight there, as you can see, reveals that, like, bit of the area up there. Oh man, what else is there? The area to the left right now is completely useless to us. There's a di uh, dais we can place a weight on that will spike us. I should mention that there's plenty of traps in this game. Oh, how many traps there are. Anyway, place a weight on that dais, which is going to activate a thing over here. As you can see, and we're going to place this. And congratulations, the Ankh is now revealed. So now we can go fight the first Guardian whenever we want, but we don't want to yet. So the last thing I'm going to do in this area is come up here and just grab these coin chests. Actually, I think warping would be slightly faster, so let's do that. God, I love this music. And this game. I played it way too goddamn much. Placing a weight on this dais will just cause like the mouth of Olmec up there to drop onto you and hurt a lot. Oh wait, this is not helpful to me at all. I fucked up. I need to be over here. Because right now we're going to start heading towards the second area of the game, which is the Mausoleum of the Giants. Also, if any of the stuff we were doing here sounded uh, confusing and convoluted, that's because it totally is. Also, you'll notice there's a dais over there. That opens up a shop where you can buy guild.exe, but we're intentionally not going to because that fishy item I mentioned, the one we're going to buy, is guild.exe. Because we already have the Shellhorn, and that's the only other item you can purchase from him. So, yeah. So, yeah. so this is the Mausoleum of the Giants. Those little slug enemies are really weird. That block can only be broken by shurikens. Kind of an annoying thing, but there are certain, like, breakable things that can only be broken by certain weapons. The good news is it'll let you know if it's breakable when whenever you hit it. Just that if the thing you're hitting it with won't break it, it'll make, like, a plinking noise. That dais hurts. Don't press it. Also, uh, the tablet at the top right of this area is the hard mode tablet. That's the one we're gonna have to read twice in order to activate hard mode, but we're not doing that for a long time. Especially because, like, we would die super fast if we did right now, because that screen gets filled with enemies that drain your life very quickly. In fact, this area in particular gets, like, way more dangerous for some reason. Also, yes, intentionally not falling into that thing right there, because if you fall into that, the floor below it breaks, and you fall right on spikes, because of course you do. That guy is kind of annoying. Thank you. Yeah, so we want to do that. That is going to cause the dais that was up there that I said would hurt to not hurt anymore, and instead give us the map. Also, we're about to get a little bit of a mini-boss that I hate. This is another case of the game fucking with people who played the original game. The puzzle in the original game was to defeat all the enemies in this room without killing any of the ghosts, but now there are only ghosts, and we need to kill all of them. Um, it's funny to me because just killing all the ghosts is something that you don't even need to read the clues to figure out, but people who played the game before, just because they know the original game, would want to not. Also, be very careful, because your whip has, like, an upswing. It, like, attacks above you beforehand, like, before whipping forward. And, uh, yeah, that can hit the thing and cause you to get Divine Retribution. This guy's really annoying. I'm not a fan. He just kind of, like, jumps around and hurts a lot. And so, ideally, I'd like to not die. So, there we go. And now we get the Rolling Shurikens, which are a pretty useful item. 
One unfortunate thing about the remake of the game is that a lot of the sub-weapons got, like, heavily nerfed. In the original game, like, they would wreck bosses. But now there's really only a couple bosses we're even gonna bother using them against. With one exception being one specific sub-weapon that we'll get to later. Amiga, oh I knew that was gonna happen. I didn't mean to do that either. Okay. This is, this is going all right. In the meantime, I'm going to go back up and get the map. Something I should mention is that this game abides by Spelunky rules, where spikes only hurt if you land on them, so we can walk right through them without getting hurt, which is nice. I'd really like a health refill before I fucking die, because that would be a hilarious way to, like, start this. So yeah, you'll notice the spike here is gone, and when we press this, we are instead gonna get the puzzle solved sound effect. And let's grab that map. The funny thing is that we don't even have the software that lets us read maps yet. I just realized I can't get to here from this side. So all these maps we're collecting are currently completely useless to us. But hey, there it is. Okay, it's like somewhere over here. Yeah, right there. If you stand on the platform, but like the bit of ground below that for too long, it just breaks, and you fall directly onto that spike at the bottom there. Anyway, we're about to get the grail point for this area, which is nice, because it means that even if I die, I don't like actually lose progress. Which is nice. God, I hate these things. And we got our health refill. Awesome. So, yeah. Mausoleum of the Giants. Over here, there's a hidden shop. Uh, I mentioned guild.exe, and what that program does is allow you to play, or it'll play a little chime whenever there's a hidden shop on the screen. But you don't need it if you know where the shops are, which I do. So, it's not really a big loss. Oh, man. Now we're coming up to one of my favorite additions to the game, or rather, favorite improvements over the original game. This puzzle down here used to suck. It was this really dumb, like, tile-matching puzzle, and now we just don't even bother. Of course, I feel like I start getting sick as soon as I start recording. So we just set it to star, and it used to be that if you wanted to like set it to anything, you had to like whip a bunch of things, and it would cause these like tiles to change in like seemingly random orders. And sometimes you had to like leave the room to reset the puzzle for it to even be possible. It was really annoying. Anyway, setting it to star caused a dais to appear here, which opens that chest. And it also causes one other thing to happen. So, one of the big puzzles with Mausoleum of the Giants here is figuring out all of the giants' names. We've seen a couple of them so far. Here's another one over here. So, for instance, uh, in order to solve the puzzle I'm about to solve, you need to, like, figure out that this guy's name is something or other. Because he's the one who you need to place a dais at the foot of, or pl place a weight, rather, at the foot of. And it causes the sacred orb to appear for this area. I should also mention that each major area has a sacred orb in it, is the way it works out, so there's only one per area. This guy's gonna fall. That will kill you instantly. And that's also because we set it to star. That's another part of the puzzle where there's a tablet somewhere that says something about him falling on a starry night. That was kind of lame, if I'm being honest. This is what I mentioned about, like, just getting hit by things and falling. It happens a lot. Also, so we're gonna open this, grab this, and we need to jump out immediately or else we get trapped like that. Man, bats are real cool. Thank god we have the Holy Grail, because if we didn't, we get to, uh, quit the game and restart, because we're trapped forever. There's a lot of things like that. And actually, I don't think the Grail is ever explicitly required until, like, the final boss. 
So, you can just make it pretty far into the game and not realize that you're screwed. It's pretty great. What the fuck am I doing? Yeah. So, one nice thing is that you can come back up here, and if you break that, the uh, laser goes away. Just in case you manage to, like, teleport out without grabbing the, uh, Onk Jewel, you're not actually, like, fucked or anything. This game does a good job of that. It's impossible to fuck yourself out of beating the game, it's only possible to fuck yourself out of getting a lot of really useful optional items. I don't like you. Okay. Anyway, we're about to head into one of my favorite, least favorite areas in the game. Wow, what is up with this? Please, I just want to go down the ladder, you jackasses. So this is the Twin Labyrinths. Right now, it sucks a lot. We can't explore most of it right now. Most of it's locked off until you get the Twin Statues. And it also abides by non-Euclidean geometry. So if we go down this ladder and then go back up the same ladder, we end up in a completely different location which I will demonstrate shortly. Uh, but right now we're gonna buy the helmet. Two, three, four, and four of those. We actually already solved the puzzle, but I'll just go back in to tell you. Yeah, for spending a lot of money here, he tells you that he opens the Big Brother shop. You don't actually need to talk to him again for the Big Brother shop to open. Also, yeah, you'll notice we're now in a completely different location, which is neat. And yeah, we'll just go back up. So yeah, that area sucks right now. It's also fucking gigantic. That is by far the largest area in the game, by a factor of two, very specifically. And yeah, there are right, right now, nothing else to really do in there. Also, none of the pots in there have anything useful in them, so you don't even have to like worry about that. Anyway, solving that puzzle with the Big Brother shop, we need to open the Big Brother shop because the Big Brother has an item in his shop that we, like, are going to need, but we don't need it for a very, very, very long time. So we could buy it right now, but it's expensive and out of the way, and we don't need it. The only annoying thing about that is we are going to have to navigate a lot more of the maze to finally purchase it when we do purchase it later. By the time we do purchase it, we're going to have the twin statues, and that whole area is going to be completely differently laid out. But it's not actually a big deal. Anyway, I switched the uh, celestial calendar, or whatever the fuck it's called, to sun, which now makes this dais appear. And pressing this dais is going to cause the Ankh to appear. And so we now have the Ankh jewel. The Ankh has appeared. And the last thing we have to do is actually make it so we can reach the Ankh, which we cannot do currently. Right now it's like raised up on a high platform and we can't reach it, so we're gonna need to like create a path to get to it. And the way we do that is by setting the phase to the moon. Bang, just like that. And doing that is going to cause the thing to happen in this room. Oh, uh, that pot up on the top right doesn't have anything useful in it. Anyway, all right, over here, he's going to crouch. That will also kill you. Fun fact. Also, this little jingle is what plays when you have the Ankh Jewel and the Ankh is in the room you're in. You can see it glowing. That's also because we have an Ankh Jewel. And yeah, that just lets you know that the boss is ready to be fought. And you can do it whenever you want, which we don't want to yet. Last thing I'm going to do in this part is a little bit in the Endless Corridor over here. Now, thank the gods, we cannot explore this area a lot yet, because this area sucks a lot. It was changed in the new version to be way worse, and I hate it. This, this area is just a complete nightmare. And you have to go through it a bunch of times, but luckily we only have to do the first floor of it for right now, so that's always appreciated. Again, I don't think any of these pots really have anything useful in them. And honestly, there's just, these enemies are all really annoying. You'll notice that these skeletons are like a lot scarier and those bats are a lot scarier than the ones we've been encountering. And that is because this is technically a backside area, which I will talk about way fucking later. Anyway, I activated the grill point and now we're gonna learn why it's called the Endless Corridor. I'm gonna go right through here. And yeah, we're back at the start. And doing that, we'll actually open this chest, which has the map in it. 
Jesus Christ. Just so much shit everywhere in this area. I absolutely hate it. Anyway, there's the map. And we're gonna go in here. And hey, here's the Queen of the Fairies. And she's telling us to find Isis' pendant. So we have to go find Isis' pendant. That is the goddess... The Egyptian goddess Isis, not the other thing. Anyway... That's not... How the fuck do I interact with this? Okay. Good lord. Anyway. So, that seems like a good place to stop our first part. So, we've completed the first two areas, more or less. We can fight the first two guardians whenever we want. That progress is going to slow down considerably as we go. Obviously, at this rate, it would only take like two hours to finish the game. But, no, it's going to take a lot more than that. So, yeah. Anyway. My name is Nick. I will see you next time. Bye-bye.